finding the job is tough. It might feel scary and also much more unstructured than you would have expected. So we prepped for you tips, how to secure a job, prep for the interview, and also some of the best practices, how to fast track your application process. There are tips for the product designers, but you also may use it um, for any other of the recruitment processes. Welcome to the Life at Mirror YouTube channel. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Lena. I'm leading product design recruitment here at Mirror in Berlin and Amsterdam offices. Hi, I'm Robert. Uh, I look after product design for core product experience here at Miro in Berlin and also in Amsterdam. Today, Robert and I would like to share some tips and tricks for design candidates who are on the job market, how to better prep and also go through the recruitment processes and how to fast track your application. So if I were a candidate right now, I guess the first step that I would do is to build my new CV, right? Um, you would need to put your experiences and updated competencies all of the things that you think would get you to that next step. There are plenty of websites and plenty of tools that have prepped the templates for you already. There are good structures. It's simply easy. Um, there are some nice color coding and designs for it as well. And it's um, very much easy to read for the recruitment teams. Um, and I think what's really important to know as well that some of the companies would ask you to fill in many of the fields uh, yourself once again. So please, before you actually build different CVs for different companies, probably you can go into the roles that you want to apply for and check what is the application process, right? So you don't waste your time before you do that. On the point of resume building, I think um, it's it's generally good to make it a habit to also frequently update it. So aside from, I think, creating one, uh, just, just getting into the habit and the practice occasionally. Doing a refresh, doing an update, I think that's, that's good to start with. The template builders, I think they're a great suggestion. Um, I think it's always easier to have something in front of you and then iterate on it, uh, apply for a few jobs, see how people respond, tweak, refine. There's a lot of good articles out there also on how to tailor and, and update the messaging so it has more impact. So I think those are really good things to look at. Well, and I think for design hiring specifically, a part of having a good CV is also having a great portfolio included in that. And if you want to know how to build that great portfolio, you should check out our other YouTube video on some tips and tricks for that. If you find a job that you actually want to go for, check out if you know someone from that company. Nothing goes better than a referral or a personal introduction to the company. So if you know someone who is working there, ask for some tips, ask for the interest with the recruitment and hiring team, and then make the best first impression. Similarly to reaching out to people that you don't know from the companies that you would like to apply for, I think it's great to actually d dive into your network, right? So potentially some of the managers, some of the hiring managers that you've had, some of the peers that you enjoyed working. It's always great to actually reach out and ask whether there are some opportunities in their companies, opening up and then ask them to refer you as well. Yeah, because oftentimes those jobs might not have even made it to their website and you're first in the queue. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great benefit there. Quite easy to identify that, especially if the job has been posted on LinkedIn, you can just go to the job advertisement, see the recruiter and see the current manager as well. If you cannot find it so easily, you can also go into the profile of the company and simply search a person who may be looking for it. In design case, that potentially would be a head of design or a product design manager, and you can just reach out to them let them know that you're looking for a new role, share maybe a Canva link and offer 15 minutes chat, right? Even if you don't get a conversation with the hiring manager, that may be well also a connection to a recruiter afterwards. So yeah, in terms of uh, getting a response from a, from a hiring manager or a head of design, uh, I think it obviously it's, it can be hit and miss. Um, also being fully transparent, I don't always have the time to respond to these messages. Uh, sometimes I miss them, but I think it's nevertheless, it's it's a good idea to, to share these. Um, I think being very specific about what you're looking for um, to increase your chance of success, that's definitely a tip I would give. But like we said, it, it can be it can be an opportunity to, to get a connection with the recruiter, even if you don't manage to get a response directly from the person you messaged. So. We all live in a very busy world. We all have a lot of things on our agenda. There is absolutely nothing bad about writing out a follow-up, bopping yourself to the top of the email saying, hey, I'm still in interested. I would like to talk about it. And I would like to discuss the opportunity. 
you could use any format for it. Um, it could be even looking a little bit like your personal development plan, right? Your goal one is to actually t- chat to the company. Your goal two is to get through the interview process. Your goal three, to get the offer and negotiate the best deal for yourself. So don't forget to put the names of the recruiters and hiring managers, the companies, locations, all of the things that actually make that specific company stand out for you as a potential employer. That would be great to actually put it together in the system, in the table, in the mirror board, use whatever actually works for for you. Yeah, and I, I think also from my personal experience, like a, it's it's a great practice. Um, sometimes my very first informal conversation, because this happens sometimes, right? You end up chatting with someone. My first informal conversation is the little napkin <laughs> with some scribbles on it, and then I take that and I put it in a Google Doc or on a mirror board, whichever tool you prefer, and and it becomes a more structured uh, tracking uh, of of the process from there. So I think, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what medium or format you start on, but make sure you capture the things you discuss. And, and also it gives a great impression to the hiring team if you come back and you say like, hey, but with so-and-so I discussed X, Y, Z, um, that, that shows that you're invested in the process. So definitely recommend uh, track everything you discuss, the questions you ask, what has been answered, also formulate your questions up front. Yeah. There is a pro tip. We also have built a similar mirror board for you to reflect on what you've done, to reflect on what you want to do, to reflect on the kind of environment that you're looking for, some of the very useful questions that you may be asking at different stages of the interview. So check out the mirror board in the description and use it as well for tracking your progress. It's very important to be able to go into the interview and truly showcase, this is the impact that I've had. This is who I have become. And this is who I aspire to become. I think those self-reflection points truly show us as the hiring team where you stand in your career, where you want to go, and how we can help you also to get there. Yeah, and I would probably add on that uh, achievements obviously go way beyond the actual design results and deliverables you created. And I think I would really, in my personal experience, what's really worked well is to, to also think of your career even in phases and stages. Phase number, number one was me becoming a senior designer and everything I did to work towards that level. But then phase two was me uh, actually starting to master some of the leadership skills. That could be a stage of your journey. And I think just taking a step back and taking that overarching perspective on your own career and, and actually creating the narrative around these phases that really helps. You can always role play some of the potential interviews with your friends. You can also record yourself if no one wants to do that with you or you actually feel a little bit shy um, to do that with someone. The whole point of that, to make sure that you can actually cut your introduction, truly highlight the major experiences, right? Truly use the time to the best of its extent and also feel a little bit more confident, right? Saying this information once, um, once again. So I would definitely suggest chatting with your friends and kind of role-playing the interview or even better, reach out to your recruitment friends, right? And ask for some feedback on that. At the end of the day, interview is a praxis as well. What I've found myself doing is, uh, even if you can't manage all of that, your roommate, your housemate, your partner, yeah. whoever's in the house, uh, your son, daughter, just 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 use them as a sounding board and, and see uh, if, especially, can I condense all this information in, in that time slot that I have for the interview? I think that's very fundamental. And even in your head, just going through it for yourself. If, even if you can't talk to anyone, just take the time to go through it for yourself and see, like, hey, how am I doing time-wise? And yeah. is this too much information? Am I going too much in detail? Uh, these are things to really guard for. Yeah. Pay attention to. So there are lots of companies out there that put a lot of very good and useful information. There could be an example of live coding interview from Google for developers. There could be also an example of Figma that's put in lots of articles for designers. Or for example, Life at Mirror, our blog is also giving you a lot of good tips. So yeah, definitely read some useful information, understand what the peers are experiencing, where they're tips and tricks or some of the, you know, opportunities as well in within the interview process and yeah, use it for your uh, value. So that's it for today. I truly hope that someone can find it useful while starting the search for a new job or a new opportunity or a new company that's going to open their doors for them and also feel that there is a little bit more strategy in place. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. And see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.